Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, and this week we're talking about explosive movement with the rifle. Now, if you remember previously, I, I addressed explosive movement with the handgun, and I also ex uh, addressed explosive movement with a partner uh, using handguns. I did that with uh, Paul Van Duck of Pace Performance. This video is going to be focused specifically on explosive movement with the rifle and some of the unique characteristics that we have to uh, be aware of when moving with the rifle that we don't necessarily have to deal with to the same degree anyway with the handgun. Uh, muzzle discipline is muzzle discipline. Uh, but taking uh, real-world characteristics and kind of getting away from that range mentality, there's some things that are usually more acceptable with a rifle, uh, but when you do them with a handgun, people freak out and take to the internet. So we're going to look at those, uh, and I'm going to address some of the, the, the really basic techniques you can use for explosive movement with the rifle that are going to give you the best degree of safety and the best degree of efficiency when engaging threats. So, uh, running with the rifle, explosive movement with the rifle, what do I do with it? Well, I want to keep the muzzle oriented in the safest direction possible if I'm not pointing it at a threat. Uh, on the range, that's usually that way. In the real world, where is it? It can be up, it can be down, it can be at a brick wall, it can be out into an open field to reasonably sure there's no one out there. Uh, it can be out to sea, it can be any number of directions um, that's the safest known distance. Uh, in the real world, 360 degrees of world around you, you're not going to necessarily know the, for a fact, the safest direction to point the rifle. So we go with the safest direction we know. Usually that's straight up, high port. It's a very acceptable movement position in the military. Uh, it's acceptable in law enforcement, acceptable in the citizen sector. Um, it's perfectly acceptable with the rifle. People get a little weird for some reason when you do it with a handgun, but that's a subject for another time. Uh, why do I explosively move? Moving from one point of cover to another, moving to cover, or uh, rapidly closing my distance on the threat to ensure a more accurate shooting position. Um, if I'm 75 yards away and I got to engage a threat, would I not be better served engaging that same threat from 50 yards? Higher hit probability, right? Um, can you shoot on the move? Absolutely. It's going to slow you down. It may affect your accuracy. It's a risk versus reward situation. Now I can deliver accurate fire as I move, but I have to slow down to do it. The advantage to it is the only form of cover you always have available to you on a threat is accurate gunfire. If I'm shooting at him, chances are high that he's either seeking cover of his own or he's rethinking his life choices and he's not able to fight back. I'm pressing the fight, coming at him with some aggression. Um, he might rethink his position or rethink his plan, move to cover on his own. So that's, a, that's the reward. The risk is I have to slow down to do it. So if he does decide to engage me, uh, he has a higher probability of hitting me because I'm not moving as fast. 100,000 possible variables in any self-defense situation. Um, we want to give ourselves the most tools available so we're not stuck with one method or the other. So explosive movement is a method. Um, I prefer it for close quarter situations if I need to make really, really quick movement to a fighting position, or if I'm behind the curve and I need to get my weapon in the fight. Say I recognize the threat and my gun's not in a condition where I can fight immediately, or I'm in the middle of a reload, or I'm off body carry and the rifle's in my bag or it's slung or what have you, I need to get into the fight. So grab the gun, explosive movement to a cover position. How do we move with the rifle? Back to that. Uh, me personally, two hands on the rifle for stability and allow me to get the gun into the fight faster if I have to stop and engage or once I get to wherever I'm going to ultimately, my cover, my concealment, my ultimate destination. Um, one big thing to think about is if you're going to run with the muzzle down, you're metering. Uh, it's very possible as you run you can muzzle your legs. Also under fatigue, we tend to lose the ability to keep the rifle stable and we start to allow the rifle to gyrate as we run. Um, that's a big deal. Our arms want to do that as we run. That's going to translate to the rifle. That means the muzzle's going all kinds of different places. Could be caught up on things, um, the environment you're in, or you could end up muzzling teammates, uh, citizens, innocents, what have you. So my preferred method of movement, the one I'm going to show you, is a high port movement. Two hands on the gun, and that's how I'm going to do it.
right, so kind of a first person view walkthrough. Uh, my starting position is going to be here at the truck. Uh, it's a good position to concealment if we're talking realistically. For the sake of this drill, let's just go ahead and assume everything is cover. Everything is going to stop incoming fire for an indeterminate amount of time. I'm going to be able to fight from it. My shot timer is going to be my cue to go. I'm not racing the clock. I'm just using the tone to start the drill. I can engage both my threats from this position and then move if I have to. Uh, let's say this is just concealment. I need to get behind something that's hard cover because I know this truck body, this sheet metal, is not going to stop incoming fire. I'm going to engage both of my threats as I'm able. If they're both armed with firearms, they both need to get service. If one of them's armed with a bat, the other one's armed with a gun, the guy at the bat can't hurt me from where he's at, so most of my attention is going to be directed at the guy at the firearm. My next position of cover concealment is going to be this blue barrel, so I'm going to engage my threats and make movement to that barrel. Now I can move, but should I move straight to the barrel? Well, the fastest way to get to the barrel, obviously, is to move straight for it. However, I can use it as cover, at least from one of my threats, by just moving laterally. Now, I can crouch down and get it between me and the bad guy. Now, if I need to move again, immediately, high up, again, the straightest, the straight line might be the fastest way to get there, but moving directly behind the cover before I worry about working up to it is going to get me there faster. This piece of concealment is almost big enough to cover me from both threats. It's also a good place for me to perform my reloads. Now, do I need to move again? Let's say I want to move to that piece of concealment, that piece of cover. This one's pretty much a straight shot. I can just come straight up and move straight to it. This one gives me a more severe angle in my threats. I can almost stack them and use this as a very good position to fight from. Uh, if it stops incoming fire, great. If it's just concealment, I may need to move back. I may need to move somewhere else. Keep changing uh, the way I do things. Realistically, are these bad guys gonna stay right where they are the entire time we're engaging? Probably not. They might seek cover of their own. They might press the threat. They might do any number of things that I can't predict. So I need to be ready for that. All right, so how should I move the rifle, my two-handed support grip? Uh, I tend to bring the rifle just straight up. I put my other hand here. I move like this. I may try to bring it out away from my body a little bit based on the situation, based on the terrain, but I want to keep it as close as I can to keep the rifle stable. And when I get there, I can assume my fighting position. I can assume my uh, supported grip. I may have to fight with my hand right here. I may have time to move my hand to my hand stop, which is my preferred grip uh, for intermediate close ranges. Don't get hung up on having the right grip to get in the fight. You may find yourself in a situation where you don't have time to assume your favorite grip, your, your thumb over bore or what have you. I may have to fight Magwell until I can work my way out to that grip that I'm used to. Know all the popular grips, be able to use all of them. There is no one true grip. Distance is gonna dictate which grip's gonna be better. A lot of different things are gonna factor into the best placement of your support hand. Uh, you may find yourself in a situation where your primary hand grip's not good. If you're running these drills, when you run these drills, if you find yourself making mistakes, fight through them. Don't stop and reset just because you messed up your reload or you messed up your safety sweep or what have you. Go ahead, fight through it, finish it. As long as there's not a safety concern, fight through any mistake you make. That's how you're going to build confidence in these skills. Explosive movement is going to fatigue you very, very quickly based on your physical condition. I'm in pretty decent shape, I'm a runner, and I still get fatigued pretty quickly because of the explosive movement. I'm burning a lot of energy really, really fast. I'm moving fast and then I'm stopping short. That burns energy quick. So when you're working these drills, just be aware, as long as there's not a safety concern, uh, as long as you're not having muzzle control issues, just keep fighting, keep working through it, stack all those skills together. You don't have to use three targets. You can use two, you can use one, uh, you can use 10, what, whatever you want to use as long as you're trying to keep it as realistic as possible. I go with 3Ds, I give them guns, do things like that. If, you're not, if you don't want to make the cost investment in 3D target systems, and these aren't expensive, they're $1.50 a piece, they last all day long as long as it doesn't rain, um, it's definitely going to benefit you. Uh, cover and concealment. Try to use uh, realistic cover, like the blue barrels are great, you can pick them up at Home Depot, but do you really see a whole lot of blue barrels existing in the world? Some objects are really, really small. Think of using a fire hydrant as a position to cover. Can you get your whole body behind it? No, but can you protect your vitals with it? Absolutely. Going the prone, you can definitely protect a lot of your body behind a fire hydrant. 
Cover's three-dimensional as well, consider that. I may be behind cover and it's protecting me from this one target, but that other target I got set up, that other threat that, I'm, that I have represented on the range, is that piece of cover protecting me from him. You may have to work your cover as you engage your threats. Another thing to think about. From the basic to the advanced, just start stacking these things together, um, working with explosive movement, and keep, keep in context, you may have to shoot on the move, that may make sense. Uh, in a future video, I'm going to address the risk versus rewards of both techniques. I'm not going to do it in this video because I don't want to make it too long. Um, but definitely get out there, get that, get out there to that outdoor range. Uh, you can dry fire this, but obviously it's not going to give you the same uh, degree of practice. Um, but find a way to get out there, make this drill happen. Whatever you got to do, even if you got to drive an hour, um, if you can only make it out there a couple times a year, it's definitely going to be worth it for your skill set. I'm Aaron Cowell with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly. People say you can't fight Chuck Taylor's. Oh shit. <laughs>